Okay, at this time I'd like to um, introduce Matt Copel. He was going to talk about independent living at home, a new way to live. Um, Matt has an engineering degree from um, U Iowa, uni uh, uni Iowa, Iowa State, State University. University. Sorry, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> and 10 days after that, he married his bride, Joanne. Um, it, it, after 23 years of uh, working in engineering, um, he retired in February of 2013, and his wife Joanne returned to work after 35 years of family raising. Matt and Joanne have two happily married daughters, Amy and Sarah, and four granddaughters and a grandson, in addition to their adopted son, Luke. Matt spent two years building his son Luke's com um, confidential document destru destruction business, Shredigator, which he presented on last year at our summit on customized employment, and serving in volunteer capacities, including Bible study fellowship. During this time, Luke aged out of school and began his post-school adult life. Luke's transition road has had a few bumps, but he has now settled into Monarch Academy and Wedstra day programs four days a week, works out twice a week with a personal trainer at the Naperville YMCA, and hangs out regularly with PSWs and friends. With Luke settled, Matt returned to work at GEA Farm Technologies in April 2015 as Director of Operations. Joanne re-retired and is uh, lovingly caring for her aging mom, the grandchildren, and Luke. According to daughter Sarah, the Copel family is now back in balance. Without further ado, Matt. All right. Welcome. How many people here are scared to death because their loved one, you don't know what the heck you're going to do in the future? How many people are raising your hand? The rest of you are liars. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, what I'm going to try to do is show you our plan. And i got to give credit right now to Mr. Ray Chase, who you're going to hear from this afternoon. I'm good? Good. Yeah, good. Uh, you're going to hear from this afternoon because our idea was to buy a separate home, similar to the McManus idea here. And uh, I was trying to talk to Ray, who does it. They do some service providing and stuff. And, and you know, it wasn't a good time for his ministry to reach out to that. And he mentioned, oh, my gosh, in the back of our house, we're going to build a place for our daughter in addition. And I'm like going, oh, never thought of that. A lot less expensive, right? So let me just run this real quick. It's from Naperville TV, and uh, it'll introduce the concept to you. When children grow up into adulthood, moving out of their parents' home is often part of the plan. But what happens when that's not a viable option for your child? Naperville News 17's Alyssa Bohennick has the story on one family that's hoping to provide an alternative for adults living with special needs. Meet Luke Cooper, a 23-year-old who enjoys playing video games, watching movies, and all things Halloween. But most of all, Luke enjoys living in the comfort of his own home. Adopted by Matt and his wife when he was just a baby, diagnosed with many special needs, caring for Luke had become part of their daily routine. But as the years passed, they realized there was a reality that needed to be faced. Where are they going to live? You know, as we age, as he ages, where is he going to go? Um, you know, Luke loves living here in his house with his dog. There are very few group homes and spaces available, very, very few in in Naperville, um, so we are really kind of stuck as to what what to do. Where was he going to go? Their plan: allow Luke to live independently with his parents nearby for support. But the single-family zoning code they currently live under proved to be a problem. That's why they teamed up with local not-for-profit Little Friends to help others understand the need for change. Luke is a young man, and as a young man, he is wanting to do all the same things that peers his age are doing. He may do them a little bit differently because he's impacted by autism. So if you can have a situation where you can carve out that piece within the home for Luke to have his own space and to still be a part of the Naperville community, that was incredibly important to the Poopals, is that he be able to stay in Naperville because Naperville was all he knew. After trips to the Naperville City Council meeting and planning and zoning commission, the Poopals found success. Passing through a residential care unit text amendment that allows families with special needs members to create a separate living space associated with their single family home. In their case, 
Luke would live in their current home with caregivers and potential roommates, with his parents and in addition in the back of their house, providing an accessible space as they age while being present for Luke when needed. It gives us and other people like us an economic way of staying within our home as we age in place and provide the best possible care for our kids that um, you know, have a hard time dealing with change. Though the text amendment still needs final approval through city council, the Couples now have a new hope for their family's future. It means everything to us. For us to be able to go out to dinner without having concerns because other people are there for Luke, for us to have that independence that we've not had, it means the world to us. And especially as we age, our patients the physical abilities are going to decline. You know, it's just, it's the right thing for my bride and I, but more importantly, it's the right thing for Luke. I'm Alyssa Bohenick for Naperville News 17. City Council will make a final vote on the matter in September or early October. So if you're getting the idea here, it's, the addition is not as Ray Chase is doing for his daughter. I gave you props earlier, Ray. It's for us. <clears throat> because that's where we're going to live. It's, it's imagine our, our Florida condo on the beach in the sand and the sun without the beach in the sun, right? <laughs> this is where we're gonna live. And it's, it's built for like old people, because I'm not old yet. My wife is older than me, but not that old yet. But we, you know, we're putting in like a whirlpool where I can you know, soak my old bones and it's all gonna be ADA. And you know, we're planning on living there a really long time, like 80s, longer. And guess what? There's already caregivers in the house, get it? So Luke's caregivers might be caring for us. <laughs> now, there is a locking door in between, and it's completely separate. Originally, my idea was to have it, oh, we'll just have a shared kitchen, because I'm Mr. Social. And my Joanne's like, no. <laughs> she wants her own kitchen. She wants her own space. And she's very wise about that. Because we need to disconnect, right? You heard this from Al, like, oh, I can't let go. Well, we want to let go as much as we can. You know, and that means totally separate. That's where the zoning thing came in because this is a duplex in R1A zoning. Get it? Although Naperville was great. I mean, they, they have now, we have now a mechanism for doing this in Naperville and your community would follow suit, I'll guarantee you. And if anybody wants to know how to do that more later, email me. I'll be glad to like walk you through because people want to help you. They do. You feel like yourself? How many people like feel like you're all alone and you're handling this thing all on your own? You're not, you're not. You just have to ask, you have to advocate and people will help you. Just a real quick story. So we're out shopping for appliances at a major appliance distributorship and uh, we picked out all of our stuff and we're sitting by the front of the store, Luke's looking at his Halloween magazines and some guy named Ricky comes walking in. You know, who, Ricky who? You know, and he's talking to Luke. He sits and talks with him about the Halloween magazines. And he looks at Joanne. He goes, if there's any problems, you know, let me know. I want to help you guys out. Okay. We turn around. He's the owner of the store. Okay. I'm not going to say which one because <laughs> I didn't get his permission to do that. So I emailed his, his uh, company and said, boy, it just meant the world to us that the man would sit and talk with Luke for a couple minutes. Have you experienced this before where people reach out to you and how encouraging that is? He has salesmen call me back. We want to help you out. We're going to give you preferred pricing, which they did. They knocked off several hundred dollars more. And it's, it's, it's the money, but it's not. You know what I mean? It's the encouragement. Oh, he said, oh, by the way, he says, I, I'm associated with a foundation and you probably want a game room, and I want to equip that game room for you. Big screen TV, PlayStation 4, Xbox, DVD, and by the way, you need some cardio equipment there because these kids don't get enough exercise. <laughs> You're not alone. What triggered that, you know, was me just saying thanks, you know, for attaching to my son. And I'm just telling you that because we do that all the time. You know, I walk into Naperville City Hall and, you know, hey, this is what I want to do. And people, they, they do want to help you. Don't feel like you're asking for a handout or something like that. You kind of are. But they want to help you. Okay. So we're, putting, we're building a pretty big addition. It wouldn't have to be this big. You know, but we want to live comfortably, and that's our idea. Okay, so we're going to live in the addition. Um, 
And you know, I've been in management for 35 years, 37 years, and I know when the boss is around, people like step up a little more. That's another advantage of us staying there. Because the people that are gonna be there, who unfortunately are paid a really crummy low wage, and we're working on that with that, that uh, legislation, but they're gonna pay a little bit better attention. I just know they will, and we'll engage them and whatever. So we're gonna kinda be there to help with that. Um, currently, we're thinking to use shift staff. You know what I mean by that? 24-7, people work eight-hour shifts. They come and they go. We originally thought about doing, like the McManuses, a, uh, a host staff, whatever it's called, where you have live-in staff, but there's like this limit. You can only have Luke plus one. Well, that dog doesn't hunt economically. You got to have at least three, maybe four. So, however, Segwin just got a, a waiver and they have a three-person home cella. What's it called? Is that home cella? Shared living. Shared living, thank you. That's the right technical term. Well, that door is cracked open, so guess who's gonna follow up on that one? Because we have a really nice master bedroom, and our thought was you can get a little bit better quality staff if they can live there. You know, maybe it's a single mom with a child that wants to live in Naperville. We're just a block from a grade school, which is a great school. You know, we might be able to get a little bit better staff that way to compensate them because the compensation's an issue, clearly. Okay, we're going to own the home and we're going to rent the home. Uh, we thought about like creating a not for profit, a 501c3. I received some very sage advice from maybe somebody that's in the room sitting right over there that, you know what, if you create a 501c3 that benefits only you, the IRS might come looking for you. And I don't want to have any part of that. So we're retaining the ownership of the home. We're going to rent it to Ray Graham is our idea. And hopefully it'll cover the mortgage, but whatever, right? Because we're all in. Doesn't matter. I'll work until whatever. Um, okay. And Luke's caregivers may care for us too someday. Ugh, chickens and eggs. What do you do? Because you can't get funding for a group home until you have the four guys or the three guys. So do you go find them? What if they're not funded? What if they're a crisis waiting to happen? For instance, a young man named Sean living with his grandmother. Good fit for Luke. Great fit. His father died a couple years ago. His mother's off the reservation, living with grandma. Not being well served, she's in her 70s. It's a crisis waiting to happen, right? So we're gonna pull the trigger, but you say crisis, you have like 72 hours to pull Sean out of the house. So what do I do? Do I build the addition and then go for funding? Do I try to get funding first? What do you do? Um, the, the roomies thing. You know, we got to find these roomies. And you would think that you could go to agencies or whoever and they'd be like sending you people. Well, there's confidentiality involved. So it's kind of like you need Yenta the matchmaker, you know, from Fiddler on the Roof. Like, I got a boy for you over here, you know? It's, it's not like that. You, you got to go find them yourself, kind of. It's, it's people, so you guys are a little younger when they're 12, 14, 16, 18. You know, watch these kids in school that your kid gets along with and start thinking about that. So we think we've got a couple roommates. We're kind of maybe looking for another one, although nothing's really in concrete. You'll see in your form, I've got like a flyer, like we're looking for roomies, that's what that's about. And I'm distributing that around because we want to have a bunch of people come. Now, here's the thing. It's not just whether Luke gets along with these guys. We got to love these families. This is a, mar this is a marriage, right? If there's a mom or a dad that's a big issue, <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, it's all got to work, you know. It's just all got to work. And that's really, really hard to do. Um, the zoning, we already talked about a little bit. And then fitting in in the neighborhood, okay. <laughs> Somebody in my neighborhood isn't going to like this. I don't know who. Most of them are pretty positive. We try to be, like, kind with everybody. But we want to make sure we're, we're doing everything right because... This is like brand new. We're going to be in this addition. It's going to take up a lot of our backyard. The rest of the house, a group home. People coming and going. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's going to complain. There's going to be hard feelings. I know that going in. Christy Landor from Little Friends said, you'll never know who it is, but 
somebody will come out and cause they'll complain. And you know what? I'm sorry for them. You know, they're going to be concerned about their housing values or whatever, you know. But I, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to move on. That's what we're going to do. And you have to find a service provider that's going to, that's going to pony up with you. Service providers are dying because they can't hire enough staff because they pay them $9 and whatever an hour. Well, who wants to do that? You know, you can make more at McDonald's and get free Big Macs, you know, and you don't have to deal with some of the issues potentially in some of these group homes. So service providers, they definitely don't want to be buying properties because they don't want to be fixing roofs and mowing lawns and, oh my gosh, a pipe broke, and, you know what I'm saying? So you got to find a service provider that's going to partner up with you. You know, we've, we've been very fortunate with Ray Graham. They're pretty forward thinking. I think Segwin is as well. I mean, there, there's a lot of them out there, but you just start establishing those relationships and figure out who that is. We refuse to live in fear. We're not. We're not going to live in fear. I want to hear you guys say that. I refuse to live in fear. I refuse to live in fear. You didn't convince me. <laughs> refuse to live in fear. Because it's like it's so overwhelming, right? Nod your heads. you got to agree. It's overwhelming. How can you possibly do this? You do it a little piece at a time. It's like, how do you eat an elephant? How do you, how do you eat an elephant? One bite, One bite at a time. That's right. So every day, every day, every day, we take a little piece and we try to chip at the block, right? And we've been working on it for years now, three years or whatever, and that's how it works. But we're going to build it and they're going to come, and I believe that that's what they're going to do. We're taking the lead on finding the roommates. That's so stressful. Joanne and I, at the end of the day, the last thing we want to do is have some other random young man and his mom and dad come over and eat hamburgers and try to be sociable. We don't want to do that. We don't. But we do because it's the most important thing we're doing, right? So stressful. But it's a little bite, a little bite, a little bite. Group home, to run a group home costs somewhere between $200,000 and $250,000 a year for staff. State funding going to cover that. Ed, what do you think? Are we good? Huh? <laughs> he says, huh? I don't know if it's going to cover it or not. We'll figure it out. If we have to man some shifts or whatever we have to do, you know, we're going to do that. Because we're Texas hold them all in on this thing. We're, that's what we're going to do. You know, God's provided for us. He brought Luke into our family. I've seen amazing blessings with this guy, Ricky, with the guy that owns the shredder company, Jamie Fellows. You know, the, the fellow shredders, there's a Jamie Fellows. He lives in Wheaton. Did you know that? He goes to Ray's church. Did you know that? And if your shredder breaks, he's got a foundation. Guess what? He just might send you an $1,100 shredder for free. He did me. You see what I'm saying? God provide, has provided for us. So that's the world we're living in. So Luke deserves a great life. So we're going to do whatever it takes because that's what we do as parents, right? So can I answer questions? Hi, thanks for that explanation. It's very inspiring. Um, are you allowed in this model to hire your own care uh, caregivers or do you have to go through an agency for that? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, in order to get the SILA funding, they have to be paid through a licensed provider. You know, otherwise, we've got home-based services now, which is like 2,000 a month. Luke has a pretty low ICAP. Um, we started, just like Lori told me this, you know, we had an ICAP, oh, Luke's a great kid, he's very happy, blah, 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 blah. What can he do on his own? <laughs> the other day, we're at Lou Malnati's. He wants to go play games. He's, he's playing games, he runs out of course, he just sits there, just sits there. I'm like, Luke, we're like right over here. He's like, I want somebody to come get me, right? That's the ICAP thinking you gotta have. He can't cross the street, so he's got a low ICAP, so that'll help with the funding. So we're hoping, instead of 2,000 on home base, because you can do whatever you want with home base, but 2,000 a month isn't gonna get it done. That doesn't get to that $200,000 number, even if you multiply it times four. So we need more funding. So the answer is no, we can't hire them. And no, you can't. It's Medicaid fraud to pay these people extra on the side. Now, maybe gift cards. 
But you know what I'm saying? That's what I thought. I'm like, I'll just chip in whatever extra. You know, I'll pay him two, three dollars out of my pocket. But can't do that. So what other involvement does Ray Graham have other than so you own the home? Well, we're going to rent the home from Ray Graham is the concept. They'll provide the staff 24-7. Um, shift staff, if nothing else, we may be able to do this shared living thing uh, other than that. And then, and then the question is like day programs. So Luke goes to a very economical program through Western DuPage Special, uh, special Rec called Rec and Roll. And it's a one to eight ratio and they go out and they eat pizza and they go bowling and they go to movies because he's, especially as time has gone on, he's gotten more social. Well, we're going to have to pay for that. But fortunately, that program is only like five bucks an hour. So it's five bucks an hour times five hours a day times four days a week. See, I and mean, we're still on the hook without question. Ray Graham also has the ability to do some, some day programs. It's a little tricky because the program he's in is not licensed. So there's, they're, they're going to have to work that out somehow. They, in other words, it's not Medicaid capable. Yeah. When you're renting the property to the organization, then are they responsible for the maintenance? And well, we're working all that out. You know, it's, there's only so much money available. So I can say, oh, well, my home, I think it's worth $3,000 a month. And maybe it is. Uh, that dog isn't going to hunt with the money. So I, I don't know the answer to that. You know, and do we depreciate the house? You know, there's probably a CPA in the audience thinking about doing that, and maybe we do. You know, but what I can tell you is, because a friend of mine said, well, why don't you just move out and move into a condo? And that way you can sell the house later. Where's Luke going to live then? Every dollar we're putting in that house, we're never going to see again. You know, I mean, we could, we're going to donate it, we're going to give it, we're going to keep it in a family trust or something, right? So there's no, like, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You know, I Yes. Could I do something like what you're doing, but you have a finished basement? Could you do a finished basement? I, it's already sure. finished, so Stephen can live down in the basement with caretakers coming and going and have a little apartment down there? Sure could, yeah. I and I, th I think that's done. I think that's, her question is, do you need to like do the whole separate kitchen and all that jazz? The question is, dis for us, for our family, it's disconnecting. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you get away from providing it? And then you have people coming into your house and you're still there. And is that awkward? I, you know, it is kind of, I mean, you know, people do it. And that's kind of the intermittent Scylla idea or the family Scylla idea. I think that's, is that right, Ed? That's family Scylla where somebody, they bring in providers, but the parents stay in the care, primary caregivers. Yes. Yeah, but, you, but your model is, it's just that instead of moving a block away, you're, you're move it to the backyard, but it's really, you're moving, and then that Scylla is going to be operated, in, in, the, in the house is going to be operated regardless of whether you're living, living on the other side of the wall or not, and then you are, you are ready, you're, you're just like a regular landlord, right. and Ray Graham might rent that house from That's you, right. if you happen to be the family and you happen to live there. Right, so we, we're playing this thing with the state, because if we still live there, they're going to call it family Scylla, and the funding is going to be like zip up. And we're like, no, 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 this is a duplex, this is a separate living arrangement. We don't live there. We're going to go to Austria. We're going to go to Hawaii. We're going to go to, probably not going to do those things, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're landlords. That's it. We're not doing anything here. We have a question. You are, you are responsible, just like the landlord would be if the, the plumbing breaks down. Ray Graham won't be responsible for that. You're the landlord. Yeah, depending upon how our rental agreement is. But I, I can, I have, I'm feeling this already that, I, you know, it's all going to come to us for maintenance. There's a question over here. We'll use the mic. So raise your hand. I'll get you the mic, okay? Something in here. You went through a process of zoning. And I'm curious here from other speakers to what processes of zoning have you gone through to get homes approved? Okay, well, this... The home is not state licensed or anything else. We, because we own the home, we don't have to get licensed through the state as like a SILA. That Ray Graham will provide the services, but the home, so we don't need like sprinklers and you know, whatever, just normal zoning. The, the reason we had to do special zoning is because we created a separate living space. We're making a duplex out of the house. And that's not permitted 
in probably any community around here. I, I don't know of any where it is. So that's why we had to do special zoning uh, for us. And there was an application process and it was all vetted through their legal department and whatever. But in terms of, that was a great question about, does this, is it a state licensed home? Is somebody from Department of Quality, whatever it is, gonna come in and like inspect the home? No, because that doesn't apply. And that's an advantage. Because retrofitting to make it like that is, is pricey. Imagine putting sprinklers in a four bedroom, two story house. Um, I have a question about then, I'm thinking of the legal part of this. Do you have a separate title to this uh, addition or a separate living thing? Um, will you have a separate tax bill for that down the road? Um, could that be sold like with an easement through your property to someone else and create a lot of complications or? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's a great question. Our concept right now is, nope, we don't have separate meters. It's not a duplex like that. We're gonna have a single property bill. A mail comes to one address and that's the way that's gonna be. Now, I have contemplated getting this thing up and running now that I have friends in Naperville and maybe others going to the taxing body, which I think is Naperville Township or something, and saying, hey, what up on the tax bill? You know, I'm providing care, shouldn't I get a break? And I don't know how to do that exactly, I'm trying to just knock that down. So we're, it's all one title, it's one, one residence. As far as Naperville is concerned, or legally, it's one residence. I've heard that when you're already on home base, it's really difficult to have the state agree to put you on SILA. Uh, what did you go through in order to make that happen? I went through nothing. <laughs> Luke was a foster baby to start with. And he's a, so he went right to the top of the top of the pile. Okay, so we have an advantage that way. And then he's a Ligus class member, so we got it with Ligus. So how difficult that is, I don't know. You know that this is Sean's situation, living with his grandma. There's going to have to be a crisis or neglect of some sort. And when that crisis occurs, is going to be very important. So isn't this more kind of like a mother-in-law's quarters? And the only difference is that you're just putting a lock on that door. That's correct. And in Naperville right now, unless you have this, a mother-in-law suite with a kitchen, bathroom, bedroom is not permitted under zoning because it's a duplex. It has, we're going to have a separate entrance, you know, which is another thing. We're not even going to go through the house because we wanted it that way. We wanted it to be totally separate. Not that we entertain a lot, maybe Mrs. Drew will come over or something, you know, knock on the door. We have one last question. Hi, thank you so much. Um, quick question, so I know you have to vet out uh, the roommate really well and the family, but what if, you know, would you have them sign a contract? Because what if something down the road you're just like, okay, that roommate's behavior is way too bad. They lied. And <laughs> how, do you, yeah. how would you get them out of there? No. <laughs> How do we get them out? That's, that's problematic. That's problematic. We haven't quite sorted all that out. Uh, we're anticipating that Ray Graham would handle that as a staffing, uh, the way they do in any of their other programs. Um, if it's not working, it's not working. You know, it's, it's because we are not going to rent to the individual guys. We're renting to Ray Graham. So it's their job to staff it. The other idea would be, hey, I vet them, I find them, and I say, hey, you know what? I like your son. I'm going to charge you fifteen hundred dollars a month, and that'll include blah 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 blah. And we got Ray Ram coming in. You got to pay for that part. That gets complicated. And then we got like legal issues. So, and getting them out is really really difficult. You know, that's you can't. If you have a, a wayward son or daughter and you want to evict them and change the locks, that's not as easy as you think it is. You know. If, they're, if you have a shared kitchen, it's not like if you had a separate apartment for just these roommates and they had their own, you know, that's different. But, so I'm, How about a warm round of applause for that?